This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome and Happy New Year. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's 1423, show number 452. Hey, it's 2023, Nick, and the markets are pretty much the same as they were in 2022. They are. They're exactly the same as they are in 2022. In fact, traders are seeing lots of choppiness and whipsaw, and that's likely to be the theme throughout the rest of the year, to be honest. It's going to be a trader's market. And as I've said before, if you cannot read charts, it will be very, very challenging. In bear markets, you better be a chartist or you better be really, really lucky. Honestly, I don't believe in luck. <laughs> and if you talk to lucky people, they probably don't believe in charts. You know that old saying, I'd rather be lucky than smart, right? That's right. And this trading business says, I'd rather be lucky than good. But uh, it's the same. And again, um, I'll take the charts any day of the week. All right. So let's go back to a call you made, I think, about two to three weeks ago. Tesla was trading upwards of 170. You called it down to 110. You were a little off. Uh, yesterday, last time I looked, it was uh, 105. I don't even know what it's at now. Um, <laughs> take a bow. Yeah, I'll take a little bow. It's um, um, like I said, I wish I was traveling yesterday, coming home from the mountains, uh, as I do live in Florida, as you know. So I was away um, skiing, but um, I would have picked this up yesterday around that uh, the low was around 105. It's now sitting at 111. And I told everybody it was going down to at least one, uh, Pearson 110, is what I said. So again, not too shabby of a call. Um, I'm going to make another one on your program right now. Okay. And the call is after a bounce, not right away, after a bounce, Apple, by the time this bear market is over, and we've got a long way to go, this is going to be a $95 stock. Okay. Right now, the stock's at one, 126, 127. So again, not, not right away. It's not something that will happen right away, but ultimately going down to $95. All right. Well, hey, so you think it's going to take a little time, though, huh? Oh, yeah, it'll take a little time because it's very oversold right now. The stock just dropped from 150 to 125. So, you know, you, you're at a psychological level where there's a lot of support here. But as the bear market matures and we go into different phases throughout this year, you'll see uh, Apple will go sub 100. I believe it'll be 95 bucks. If Apple's going to do that, uh, where is that going <laughs> to leave the other fangs uh, and Microsoft and uh, well, you know, <laughs> funny you say Microsoft. Funny you say Microsoft because that's down five percent today. That's now at two twenty-seven. That ultimately goes down to probably one eighty, one eighty-five. Maybe, maybe because it's it's such a diverse company. Maybe it goes to one ninety. But you know that's its downside. So there's lots of downside still to come. Even though I think in the short run here in January we'll get a little January effect. Um, but outside of that. You know, that'll just lead to some really, really good shorting opportunities. All right. Hey, so gold is strong again today. Yeah, gold's been a monster. I mean, this has had a great run. Um, today we have gold up one percent. Um, the one thing I want to point out though, Carrie, and everybody should remember is that I gave a call on here saying gold's going up to eighteen seventy-five, right around that area, give or take a couple points, as you know. But um, today it got to 1871. So we're getting close to the target. And when we get up there, I think, you know, that's where um, traders either should snizzle some gold off the table or they should put trailing stops in because that could be a pretty important high for the near term. Intermediate high. And it, hey, seasonally, this is a great time for precious metals. We normally see them take off Q4, used to be early Q4. Now it's later Q4 and Q1, and basically it's behaving uh, as we expected it to. Yeah, it's behaving right according to the script, really. And um, But now we're nearing those upside objectives. And you know me, I'm very uh, number specific. 
So when we hit those hit those numbers, I, I back off. Like even silver, you know, I love silver, as you know. Got in on on the, the last day of August. Um, sold out a couple weeks back, and you know, it's kind of chopping around in somewhat of a range here. Still, it's very very strong, sitting above twenty four dollars. But now I wait for it. Let it pull back. It's going to correct, and then you know, it's time to reload up on silver again. But right now, I wouldn't touch it because it's just too high on the charts. Understood. Understood. And uh, hey, finally, let's uh, talk about Bitcoin. And then I just want to get a little bit of a perspective of where you see 23 going. Sure. So Bitcoin today is it's it's basically um, up a little bit. I think we're at 16,800. So Bitcoin has got a little bit of a bid going on. But you know, my take has really not changed on Bitcoin or Bitcoin futures. I think that Bitcoin is ultimately headed down to probably 11,000. This week, um, I'll recalibrate the numbers, recalculate and recalibrate the numbers. And I, I do think 11,000 or maybe even potentially sub 11,000 is in the cards now for Bitcoin. Um, you could bounce up a little bit here. I wouldn't rule out a little bit more upside. It could even go as high as 18,000 and change. But ultimately, the downside pattern is so strong that you'll test 11,000 at some point here um, over the next couple months. All right. Well, hey, so that's if you make that call right, Nick, then uh, everybody has to be a believer here. Uh, but we've made the, <laughs> we've been uh, spot on with this one from the get go from uh, when it finally ended its parabolic rise to the day we nailed it, you know? So. Yes. And again, you know, when you use these patterns and you look at how things repeat and you learn them, um, you know, they, they, it does, it's not as difficult as most people think it is. So, you know, it's a lot of work. It, it definitely is. But, you know, Bitcoin, hopefully we helped some people out. A lot of people were bashers. A lot of people didn't believe anything that we talked about here. Um, I've never been a believer in cryptocurrency, period. I just think it's a test project for rolling out digital currency to the world. But um, overall, you know, if you're a trader and you caught these moves, you made a lot of money. I, I personally don't touch it because I'm not a believer in it. I make my money elsewhere. But, um, you know, this, this is setting up for a move. It could even be below 11,000 as I look at the pattern right now. And, you know, again, I know a lot of people think it's cheap down here, but things that are cheap have a history of going becoming cheaper. You know, my mother always had a saying. She used to say, cheap is dear. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wise lady you know and uh, that's right hey you know she's gone but uh you know i learned a lot from her and uh what looks like a bargain often isn't and uh just because something is low doesn't mean it can't go lower right that's right carrie you know when i have a lot of people living you know growing up in new york uh, same as you we know a lot of people in the restaurant industry when they put things on sale, right, or they have a food item and they're going to run a special, it's because they need to get rid of the item. <laughs> yeah. yeah, push the push the filet mignon here because it's about to go <laughs> rotten and then it's going to be a total loss, right? That's right. That's right. So, you know, the same thing works in the markets. It's, it's really no different. Yeah, and, uh, and they're pushing all sorts of products here, uh, many of them that aren't right for you. They... Nick, if you're not a trader, how do you uh, play the market that we're seeing unfold in front of us? You, you really don't have a chance, honestly. It's very, very difficult. We're, we're looking at a very difficult year going forward, too. Um, you know, Kerry, whenever, if you recall, in, in 2022, when I said that the bear market has begun, people didn't really believe that. I even told my own members to the day when the NASDAQ bear market began, they didn't believe me. You know, but we made a lot of money and, um, you know, now they're believers, but we are in a mature bear market. So everybody still will listen to the television networks. I always tell everybody, just turn the TV off, learn the charts, learn how to read this stuff and you'll be fine. If, if you're not really a chartist, I don't know how you navigate through this. Uh, it's a good question. And uh, for which, uh, you know, don't have a lot of answers. Uh, but like you said, uh, They'll still be telling you there's a bear market going on even after it turns into a bull market, right? That's that's right. And that's why you have to be a chartist because 
you know, what, what we're going to probably hear at some point is the recession is taking hold. Things are so bad. Today we had news that Salesforce is laying off 10% of their workforce. I mean, this is supposed to be Salesforce, yeah, right? They Salesforce. should be hiring. Right. Yeah, yeah Salesforce is hiring. Got, you know, getting rid of their Salesforce. So, yeah. you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Look at the irony in yeah. that, right? And Salesforce then, you know, reduces you, you, Salesforce. <laughs> so, you know, you get these kind of, uh, of events taking place. And then when a, when a recession hits, it's, it's often a time when you should be buying stocks. So again, you know, that's why I'm not smart enough to predict when the news media is going to say there's a recession. Um, I'm smart enough to say, hey, this is where something looks attractive. And I'll give you a great example of that. Today, I closed out a Tyson food option, call option. Um, we were in it just about a couple of weeks, so not even a couple of weeks, maybe like 10 days or so. And um, nobody wanted this stock at 60 bucks. No. Nope. And today I took a 5% gain on the swing and I took a 24% gain on the option. And again, this is because I know how to use charts. If I didn't know how to use charts, I'd be like the rest of the world, afraid to pick it up down at those levels. All right. Well, uh, that should tell you something, right? <laughs> All right. So basically, if we can sum it up, 23 is going to be pretty much be a carbon copy of 22. And uh, but do you think the volatility is going to be as bad or is it going to be worse? Well, I'll talk about volatility real quick is that it's been somewhat skewed, right? We've had these, you know, just think about it. The markets, even when they were at their lows, volatility really has not broken down that badly. The VIX still is above 22. But you would think with the markets, the way they behave, who saw the VIX hit 50? It did not do that. So what I would say is I think we're going to still have volatility remain pretty high and elevated, meaning above 20 or around 20. But I do believe that we're going to get unprecedented whipsaw, meaning you're going to get these big, big rallies and you're going to get these big, big sell offs. And yes, ultimately, we'll make new lows. All right. Well, you got the word right from the master trader, what you can look forward to in 2023. Take it or leave it at your expense. Just remember, Nick is on a roll. I mean, I think we've got six or eight major calls you've made as of late, and uh, they've all come to pass. So take it with, uh, with the respect and consideration that it is due. You're not just reading this on the uh, horse prediction tip sheet that they, the guys never make any money actually betting on horses, they make money predicting what horses are going to win and then being wrong, kind of like weathermen. So think about that when you go over to his site, inthemoneystocks.com, and you'll see his record, extensive record for decades. And the Twitter feeds are at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Your emails are welcome, kl at kerrylutz.com. Make sure you keep putting those comments on the YouTube channel. Yes, Brian, I know what you're thinking that uh, Brian C that gold is a scam, but that's our own personal little joke. It will be it is the biggest scam in the world until one day you wake up and it isn't. And uh, then you'll wish you had participated in that scam. But hey, everybody's got to do what's right for them. Again, email KL at carrylutz.com. Nick, happy 2023. Happy New Year, Carrie.